चलिए ठीक है दिस वन अच्छा लेट्स स्टार्ट दिस इज व्हाट मार्च 17 ठीक है मैम दिस इज मार्च 17 और क्वेश्चन पेपर क्वेश्चन पेपर वन टू ठीक है मार्च सेवेंटी फेब्री मार्च अच्छा इफ गॉट दिस मॉलिक्यूल एन ई सिंग अदर स्ट्रक्चर आइसम ऑफ दिस मॉलिक्यूल वी गोट टू डू क्वेश्चन ट्वेंटी टू फोर्टी सो अदर स्ट्रक्चरल आइसम ऑफ दिस मॉलिक्यूल आर शोन आर ऑल्सो फाउंड इन कैरोसिन विच स्ट्रक्चरल स्ट्रक्चर इज अ स्ट्रक्चरल आइसम ऑफ क्यू वट्स दी आंसर फॉर दिस किस का वट इज दी आइसम ऑफ दिस मॉलिक्यूल विच वन ए बी सी और डी ठीक है एक सेकेंड दिस हेज हाउ मनी कार्बन इट्स कॉट दीज आर ऑल कार्बन आर्ट राइट सो इट्स कॉट अच्छा सो दिस वन हैज सेकेंड अच्छा दिस वन हैज कितने हाउ मनी कार्बन इट्स कॉट थ्री फोर फाइव सिक्स सेवन एट नाइन एंड टेन ठीक है सो इट्स कॉट इट्स कॉट टेन कार्बन तो इफ यू लुक एट डी दैट्स वन टू थ्री देन फोर एंड फाइव Six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. So D looks to be an isomer because it has exactly the, it has exactly the same number of. But is it an isomer or not? That's the question. Okay, is it a different arrangement or is it not a different arrangement? So have a look carefully. Okay, if I, if I look at this molecule, that's one, two, three, four, five. Six and seven carbon atoms in a line. Okay, if I look at this molecule over here, uh, I say if I look at this molecule over here, uh, it's got how many carbon atoms in a line? That's uh, I say that's one, two, three, four, five, six, and Seven. It also has seven. So it's got. Uh, it also has six, and then there's a different arrangement. So that's uh, that's fine. That's a nice one. Uh, what is wrong with C, B, or A? Okay, C has how many carbon atoms? Uh, how many? One, two, three. C has ten as well. Just a second. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. So this one is definitely not. And I assume, okay. B has ten. How many is the one, two, three? I say A also has ten. That's uh, I say, but A is exactly the same. A also has ten. It's got if you count the number of, but they're exactly the same. Okay, these molecules have exactly the same arrangement. How do they have exactly the same arrangement? Because if you look at the uh, like if I if I draw, so there are seven carbon atoms in a line. One, two, three. Four, five, six, and and seven. So there are seven carbon atoms in a line. On the sixth one, there's a branch. So you have a branch of the sixth one. On the fifth one, there's another branch. So you have a branch on the fifth one. On the third one, you have a branch. You have a branch over here as well on the third one. So they're exactly the same. They're just drawn differently. Okay, but they are exactly the same molecule. Is that clear? Is this clear? Because these two are exactly the same. Yes. Okay. Yes. Third, fifth, and sixth. Third, fifth, and sixth. You still have exactly the same thing. I said next one. Which radical is most likely to be formed by the homolytic fission of one covalent bond in in ultraviolet light? Which is the bond that actually breaks? UV light. Which which is the bond that readily homolytically breaks, and it ends up forming a free radical? That bond is a Cl bond. Do you remember that? The Cl is the one that that breaks away. So Cl will be a radical. It will have incomplete bonds, and the carbon will be a radical. So it's going to be what? Uh, it's going to be CH2Br. Okay, so it's the Cl that's going to break. Okay, remember that uh, ozone depletion, uh, CFCs. It's the Cl bond that actually breaks. Next one, propene undergoes a variety of reactions. Which was correct? Okay, let me open the uh, chart for an alkene as well. Always, uh, always the revision chart. Just a second. I said so. We've got this revision chart, and he's talking about alkenes. Um, so alkenes undergo a lot of reactions. See, alkenes undergo 
a lot of reactions and the question is about uh, which way is correct and he's talking about propene i think so propene is this molecule it's cst with the c double three carbon atoms there's a double bond h and h so that's what that's what a propene molecule is now um, first thing br2 what happens when you add br2 bromination happens so the br gets added to the double bond it it gets added to to these two carbon atoms the double bond goes away so it's not going to be one bromo propane it's going to be one bromo and there's going to be a two bromo as well so it's going to be one two di bromo propane so so the first one is incorrect to get the first one is incorrect to get go back to the second one what happens when you have a, have cold dilute k mino 4 kya hota what happens to an alkene when you have cold dilute k mino 4 mild oxidation please sir okay that's mild oxidation because when you have an alkene and you are add cold dilute alkene k mino 4 a diol is formed so basically your double bond goes away and oh groups get added to the double bond so that is what's going to happen so so oh groups the, the double bond goes away and the oh groups are going to get added so that's not going to be propanoic acid i mean it's going to be propen 1 2 diol okay there's going to be two oh groups so that is also wrong i said what about hpr uh, so when i add an hpr molecule to it uh, hpr will get added to it where will the h get added to this one or this one uh so to the one that is attached to the alkyl group no the h remember the rule is markovnikov's rule is that the h gets bonded to the carbon that's already bonded to more h atoms right so the h will bond with this one the double bond in the middle will go away and uh, br will get that's your major product okay so the markovnikov's rule is when you have an unsymmetric alkene and things are going to get added to the double bond uh, the h will get added to the carbon that's uh, already bonded to more h atoms is that clear so that's going to be that's exactly what you're going to get two bromopropane right so so c is your correct correct answer in this case is that clear yes sir and the other one is also possible i mean it's not that the other one is not possible but that's a minor product the h might get bonded to this one as well so one bromopropane is also a possibility but that's your that's going to be your minor minor product uh so that's your that's your markovnikov's rule i said what's wrong with the i said so we got we got our answer what is wrong with the hot concentrated acid effect came no for um will it form propanoic acid what happens in hot concentrated came no for like what happens to the double bond it's more like, like it splits or it breaks down like so the, more, yeah yeah so the double bond breaks down and you're either going to have two carbon chains or you're going to have one carbon chain one h or you might have double bond with two h's right so each one will turn into its respective uh, product it's going to form carbon dioxide this one with one carbon chain the carbon will turn into a carboxylic acid with two carbon chains it will turn into a into a ketone so what will happen in our case the double bond will break this one will turn with two h's it will turn into carbon dioxide and water right yes sir and this one has one carbon chain so with one carbon chain the carbon will turn into a carboxylic acid so it's going to be acetoic acid it's not going to be propanoic it's not going to be propanoic acid it's going to be it's going to be acetoic acid yes sir okay then the next one is polymerization of ethene gives this thing polyethene how does the bonding between carbon atoms compare with that in ethene so ethene is double bond right this is hs uh polymerization is when you have lots of ethenes and their double bonds will break and they would join up and there would be lots of monomers joining up so so which is the correct answer 
and he's talking about the carbon carbon bond the bond that is between the carbon atoms then it's longer and weaker so it's b i think so it's going to be longer because single bonds remember double bonds there's stronger attraction there's more electrons so the atoms will be closer to each other because there is stronger attraction so so it's going to be shorter double bond is always always shorter and and stronger as well because of the greater attraction so this one is weaker and okay that's fine i uh, said so this one is going to be what uh, longer and weaker in the, weaker in in polyethene he can remember this uh, if you have a triple bond a triple bond is going to be shorter because it's going to have more attraction because of the more number of electrons it's going to be shorter and it's going to be stronger if you have a single bond it's always going to be longer because you just attracted to two shared electrons the nucleuses are not going to be that attracted to to a single bond as a next one 25 diols in 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 which both hydroxy groups are bonded to the same carbon atom can spontaneously eliminate a water molecule to produce a carbonyl compound so what he's saying is that diols in which both hydroxy groups are bonded to the same carbon atom so let's say both hydroxy groups are bonded to the same carbon atom he says that they spontaneously eliminate a water molecule to produce a carbonyl compound so so spontaneously emit a water molecule so the oh is lost and uh, h is lost a water molecule is lost and he says uh, so so the oh and h are lost and he says that it changes into a carbonyl compound so that's that's i think what he's saying uh what he meant by that so which compound after complete hydrolysis gives a positive reaction with toluene ch and so so first thing who reacts with toluene aldehydes aldehydes and ketones no just aldehydes uh, toluene oh, is okay. toluene is this one that if you have a if you have a primary alcohol a primary alcohol will turn into an aldehyde if you oxidize it it will further get oxidized to a carboxylic acid by KMnO4 or K2Cr2O7 but the aldehydes can also be oxidized by i mean they can be oxidized by KMnO4 or K2Cr2O7 but they can also be oxidized by tolens and felling as well so that is also a possibility so it can happen with that as well so uh based the paper going back so let me so we we're dealing with an aldehyde so we're looking for an aldehyde so the end result is that we're going to get a positive result with toluene so that's an aldehyde we're looking for so complete hydrolysis starting with the first one that's butane right butane and 11 dibromo so that means bromine over here and one one so bromine on the other one as well and the rest are all h atoms so the rest are all h atoms now you've got uh, you've got this thing what's going to happen with this uh what is hydrolysis a halogenoalkane if you have a halogenoalkane it will its halogen will get 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 replaced by oh ions hydrolysis will turn into an alcohol so we're going to just do that so the bromines are going to turn into into oh and then he did tell us that there would be a spontaneous elimination of a water molecule so so the oh will be lost and the h will be lost uh, from this one so so it is turning into an aldehyde right so it just turned into an aldehyde aldehyde the carbon atom at the end is the way the double bond o is so it turns into an aldehyde and that aldehyde will give a positive result with toluene so i think a is a is going to be correct uh so that's it the other ones are wrong because if it's 12 dibromobutane the oh will not be on the same carbon atom or the hydroxy groups are not going to be on the same carbon atom which is why 
they will not spontaneously eliminate a water molecule because it only happened if both of them are bonded to the same carbon atom. So, so it will not spontaneously turn into an aldehyde or a ketone. D will turn into a ketone because uh, because the, it's two bromo and uh, so both of them will get hydrolyzed and they will turn into which. And then they will spontaneously limit it. They will turn into carbonyl. So it's going to be a ketone in the middle. Is that clear? Yes. Yes, sir. It's a baggy. Propane 2 all undergoes many reactions, which was correct. So, so it's an alcohol, but it's a, what type of alcohol? It's a secondary alcohol, propane 2 all. So that means the OH is on the second uh, middle carbon atom. So k of 4 oxidation. What will happen? What will this turn into? Uh, ketone, sir, right? Yeah, it's going to a secondary alcohol turns into a ketones. A secondary alcohol will turn with chemo four will turn into a into a ketone, and ketone does not get oxidized. So, so not an aldehyde. You'll get a double bond O in the middle, not at the end. Acha, with Cl two, I don't. Will it react with Cl two? Alcohols have no reactions with Cl2. Um, I mean, at least the OH group, it has it has absolutely no reaction with with chlorine. There's there's one reaction with chlorine, which is this one, which is free radical substitution, which happens in UV light. But that happens with the carbon chain, not with the OH. Any carbon chain, the H will get substituted by. They're gonna get substituted by. Uh, by CLs. So, no reaction over here. What does concentrated sulfuric acid do? Concentrated sulfuric acid, what does it do? It turns an alcohol and it dehydrates it. So, you've got concentrated H2SO4 or Al2O3 plus heat and it turns back into an alkene. So, so the alcohol will, the OH will go and you'll put a double bond in its place. So that's fine. This is fine. This is an alkene because it's going to be two H's, three H's with this one. And there's probably going to be one H. This is going to go. So there's going to be one H over here. So you're going to get exactly the same thing. So C is correct. Is that clear? Yes, sir. Yes. Sir. So the next one is Ethane one two diol has the following structure. So, uh, which, without breaking the CC bond, there are five possible oxidation products. Uh, what is the total number of aldehyde groups in carbox? So, how oxidation products? How would it have five different oxidation products? What type of alcohol is this? Sir, I think both of them are uh, primary. So they're both they're both primary alcohols, right? So what does a primary alcohol turn into? Uh, so it turns into aldehyde and uh, into carboxylic acid. So how do you have five products? So is it like an isomer or something? It's going to be a combination. Like the first one turns into an aldehyde. And the other one also. So it's, yeah, that's two. And the other one also turns into an aldehyde, right? That's one. Well, that's one. I mean, that's one molecule, right? I mean, you said that it might get oxidized into what? It might get oxidized into an aldehyde or a carboxylic acid, right? I mean, that's what happens. Primary alcohols, uh, primary alcohols, they turn into aldehydes and then they turn into carboxylic acid. So, so that's the first one. They might turn into an aldehyde, right? Is that clear? Yes, sir. Then the next one, they might, so one of them might turn into an aldehyde, the other one stays as it is. Nothing happens to it. What else? Um, one of them turns into a carboxylic acid. Uh, the other one doesn't do anything. Then you might have uh, one of them turns into an aldehyde. 
and the other one turns into a carboxylic acid. And the fifth one is probably going to be that uh, both of them, they turn into a like full oxidation. They both turn into a into a carboxylic acid. Is that clear? Is there any other combination that's left? Mm, I don't I think, think so, sir. Tika, so not really sure if there's any other combination. Now, the mm -hmm. thing is that, uh, so that's it. So I guess uh, the five possible arrangements. Um, so what is the total number of aldehyde groups and carboxylic acid groups in these five products? So that's a uh, aldehyde. This is an aldehyde. Two aldehydes, so that's three. Uh, this one is an aldehyde. So I think four aldehydes, right? And how and how many carboxylic acids? Uh, two carboxylic acids, three, uh, and four carboxylic acids. I mean, I have, a, I have a carboxylic acid over here. I think I'm going to mark them in crosses. I've got a carboxylic acid uh, where over here, over here, and so I've got I've got four carboxylic acids. Is that clear? Uh, yes, uh, but I just have a question, sir. In this case, because like there's no reagents or uh, or conditions mentioned here, so we can say that there there can be multiple com com combination of products, right? But if yeah, like, because they, they didn't they didn't mention any any conditions. They just said that there are five possible oxidation products. Okay, sir. So it could okay. be earlier, it could be carboxylic acid, depending on depending on the conditions, right? Okay, sir. Uh, so then you have um, this is a ketone, right? It reacts with hydrogen cyanide to form an organic product called a cyanide. Which statement is correct? So you got you got uh, two carbon atoms. You got uh, on the third one you got a ketone, and then you have two more carbon atoms, right? I uh, said so this is this reaction. This is this reaction over here. Where uh, let me show you the mechanism. That the carbonyl group is polar, so the CN bonds with the carbon that's positive at the bottom, and the O, I mean the H bonds at the top with the oxygen, which is negative. So, so you got an OH and you got a CN at the bottom. So that's what's going to happen. So, so in our reaction, the CN will bond with the carbon. The double bond will go away, and the O will bond with the H. So the CN and O and each are going to bond. So which statement does the cyanohydrin product have a chiral center? Does it have a chiral center? No, sir. So not at the moment. So no chiral centers at the moment. Um, because the two chains are exactly the same. Product is formed by electrophilic addition. What is the process called? This is called, it's a mechanism that you have to memorize. That's nucleophilic addition. That the CN minus one that's a nucleophile because it gets attached to a positive thing. Anything that's attached to a positive thing, that's a that's a nucleophile. So this is called nucleophilic addition. So electrophilic is wrong. So it's formed by an intermediate which contains a COH group. Does it look at your no, intermediate? Sir. Because the H comes in later. So the OH is formed much later, not in the intermediate. So the last one is probably the correct option. So what's the last one? That's, uh, I mean, that's that's a condition for the reaction. You need CNN as a catalyst. I mean, that's uh, that's true. NACN is the is the catalyst for this reaction. So next one, I've got compound X and it's heated under reflux with an excess of acetate K two Cr two O seven to form. Compound Y. So look at X first. What's X? It's uh, one, two carbons. Uh, on the second carbon, there's an OH. Then, I mean, so that's one, two carbons, then OH. Then on, on the third carbon, there's uh, H. And there's a CHO branch, which is an aldehyde. So you got, you got a CH, CHO branch on the third carbon atom, and then you have a CH3. 
and you can add the H's, 3H's, 1H, 3H's. So that's your molecule. It's, uh, it's basically an aldehyde and, and an alcohol. I said, so both X and Y are, what's Y? I said, it gets, he's refluxing, right? What does an aldehyde turn into if you reflux it? Carboxylic acid. So basically your product is going to be that the aldehyde will turn into a carboxylic acid. What about, what about the OH over here? What type of OH is this? Primary, secondary, or tertiary? Sir, I think it is tertiary. How many carbon changes? Oh, no, no, no. So it's, it's secondary, secondary. So this one is secondary, right? So secondary alcohols will turn into a? Ketone. That's, it's going to turn into a ketone. Okay, so remember this, that uh, secondary alcohols will turn into a? Will turn into a ketone. So secondary alcohols will turn into a ketone and uh, the H's, they would be three H's, one H, three H's with, with this one. So that's your product, right? And it's full oxidation, it's reflux. So that means nothing can get out. There's a condenser on top, which will prevent anything from escaping. So both X and Y are separately worn with fillings and the observation noted, what are the observations? So what is felling used for? It's used as a test for aldehydes. It will oxidize an aldehyde to a carboxylic acid. And it will give a brick red precipitate if you react it with an aldehyde. So who's the aldehyde over here? This is the aldehyde. Over here, you have a ketone, you've got a carboxylic acid. So you don't have an aldehyde in this one. So this is the aldehyde. Um, so what's the answer? This is the one that's going to give a brick red precipitate. So this was what? This was, I think this was X. So, so B is the answer, right? Yes, sir. Is this clear? Yes. As the next one, which two compounds can react together to form an ester? Which two compounds form an ester, by the way? Sir, I think it's C. You need a carboxylic acid to form an ester and you need an alcohol to form an ester. So esters are always formed between a carboxylic acid and an alcohol. The OH is lost. It's a condensation reaction and they would join up. They would form an ester link. And water is produced as a molecule. I said, next one, last 10 questions. So nitrogen and phosphorus, TK, this one, last 10. So I've got nitrogen and phosphorus are both in group 15 of the periodic table. Phosphorus forms a chloride with the formula PCl5, but nitrogen does not form NCl5. So why can phosphorus form PS PCl5 while nitrogen cannot? It can't form NCl5. It can only form NCl3. They both belong to group five. They both have five electrons in the outer shell. What's the reason for that? In terms of bonding, why can phosphorus make more bonds? Sure, because it can only form three bonds, right? It is a it is group five, right? But phosphorus is making five bonds, right? So how about number one? Yeah, number one is the answer. I said, remember, remember this. Like if I open the data booklet, remember this always. When it comes to bonding, the octet rule is only applicable. Like if I, I said, when it comes to bonding, remember this. The octet rule is up till this point. I mean, these elements have a maximum of eight electrons in the outer shell. They can't have more than eight electrons. 
Like if you look at nitrogen, nitrogen's uh, nitrogen's uh, got seven electrons, so that's two in the first shell, five in the five in the second, right? So nitrogen has room for just three electrons. That's it. It can maximum it can go is that eight electrons. So that's just room for three electrons. So it can only make three bonds. Is that clear? Yes, sir. But below this, the octet rule does not really apply. Like if you look at phosphorus. Phosphorus has 15 electrons. So it's uh, like if the electronic configuration of phosphorus is what, two and then eight and five. So how many electrons does it need to complete its outer shell? Three. No, it doesn't need three. 13 more. Sir. 13 more. Sir. What's the third shell? Third shell, make the third shell is third shell has maximum 18 electrons. You can remember the third shell is much bigger in size. The first shell has a maximum of two electrons. The second shell has a maximum of eight electrons, while the third one has a maximum of 18 electrons. So the point is that the phosphorus can actually accommodate a lot more electrons. So phosphorus can make many bonds. It can bond with three atoms. It can also bond with five atoms because there's a lot of space available for, for, for phosphorus. There's a lot of room to accommodate more electrons. Is that point clear? Yes. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Oh, Saruka, okay. so look at CL. CL also does that. Like fluorine can only make one bond, but CL can CL can even bond with seven fluorines. So how can it do that? Because CL has its its. I mean, CL has uh, its two its seven, right? So its outer shell doesn't need one electron. It actually needs uh, eleven electrons to be complete, because maximum eighteen, and it's never going to be complete, because you can't find enough atoms to actually fill the, fill the outer shell. So so CL can accommodate electrons from seven fluorines. And even after that, it will still have 14 electrons, not 18. So there would still be room. That's seven, right? So even after bonding with seven fluorines, its outer shell is still not complete. So the point is that CL, so that's why elements that are below, I mean, if you leave the first, uh, if you leave the second period, after that, the elements have multiple oxidation states because they can, increase the number of bonds that they make. And so sulfur does the same. Sulfur can be bonded to two oxygens. It could make SO2. It can also make SO3. Uh, it can be bonded to six fluorines as well. So they can make a number of bonds. So the, 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 the type of bonds and the number of bonds, it varies after that. Do you remember Sir? that? Yeah. Sir, is it possible for chlorine or uh, similar compound to uh, similar, similar elements to it uh, to complete its outer shell? No, it's not possible. I mean, it's it is possible theoretically. It, it is possible, but it's not going to be possible because uh, there wouldn't be any room. Like if right now it's making seven bonds, right? So that's fourteen electrons. Yes, sir. So its outer shell is still not complete. But you run out of space. Like you, you don't have enough space around the atom. To accommodate more more atoms, is that clear? Yes, sir. So usually, what happens is that most atoms they run out of run out of space after they've bonded to four or five CLs, or I mean four or five atoms. So quickly, next one, uh, thirty-two. Let's try and finish. So when a sample of gas is compressed at constant temperature, uh, so the pressure increases. How many times? Uh, I think four times. And the volume changes from 76 to 20.5. So what is the ideal gas relationship between pressure and volume? What is pressure and volume relationship? Uh, inverse. Yeah, that's an inverse relationship. So is the gas behaving idly? Idly means is the, is the gas behaving according to your relationship? Yes. Pressure increases four times, right? Mm -hmm. The volume should decrease by four times, right? Mm -hmm. so, so 76 divided by four, what do you get? You get 18. You get, what do you get? 76 divided by four. You get, I think, 19. 19, 19. So you're not getting exactly the same. I mean, it's it's kind of following the relationship, but not exactly. So, mm. so we're going to say that it's not an ideal gas. 
otherwise mm-hmm. it would have followed the relationship exactly um so so the first statement is correct the the gas does not behave idly what about the second statement uh, the gas partially liquefies if the gas partially liquefies would you get a bigger volume or a smaller volume मतलब अगर गैस लिक्विफाई कर जाती है तो यू गोट गेट लेस गैस राइट यू गेट स्मॉलर वॉल्यूम मे बी हाफ ऑफ द गैस लिक्विफाई सो यू माइट यू जस्ट गेट टेन सीम क्यूब राइट सो इट इज नॉट पार्शली लिक्विफाइंग बिकॉज यू गेटिंग अ बिगर वॉल्यूम कंपेयर टू वॉट यू शुड हैव गॉटन अकॉर्डिंग टू द इक्वेशन सो इट्स डेफिनेटली नॉट लिक्विफाइंग इज दैट क्लियर and again if the gas is lost from the container you're going to get a smaller volume not a bigger volume so these two statements are are wrong as a next one which of these uh, statements are always correct the sum of the oxidation numbers of all the atoms in a compound is zero that seems fine ah uh, my, my only hunch is Yeah, it's going to be zero because if it's a, but they didn't write if it's a neutral compound. But anyways, mm-hmm. I think that's a. I think technically a compound is neutral. But you would have to, I mean, check the Morgan scheme for this one. Uh, but the first one looks correct. The oxidation number of uh, sodium in a salt is positive. N is always plus one. The oxidation number of chlorine in a compound is negative. Is that true? And what is the oxidation number of chlorine? So normally it's minus one, but it could be like plus five or plus seven or plus three. It could mm. be plus. It could be plus seven, like we just did that. Okay, where's the where's the CL? I mean, we just did a question over. Here. I mean, over here. Sorry. Like if CL is bonded to fluorine, fluorine is more electronegative, so so the electrons will be actually closer to fluorine, right? So fluorine will be the one that's minus one. You can remember the oxidation states are based on the electron negativity values, right? So if the electrons are closer to fluorine, fluorine is the one that's minus one. Chlorine will be the one that's plus seven. Is that clear? Because all seven electrons of chlorine will be further away towards fluorine. So chlorine could have a lot of oxidation states because it can bond in a number of different ways. so that's it's not always negative you can you can you can think of a compound like hcl h is plus 1 o is minus 2 cl is x the total charge is equal to 0 so x comes out to be plus 1 cl can be plus 1 as well as a next one sulfur dioxide which statements are correct increasing the pressure increases the yield of so3 you're increasing pressure which side will be favored the product side ठीक है so you're going to get more so3 right yeah. as a so you're going to get more so3 right so that's the next one uh increasing the temperature lowers the value of the equilibrium cost in kp so mm-hmm. first thing first thing increasing the temperature which side will be favored endo or exo increase temperature should it be it would be endo i think oh no it's yeah it's endo it's endo endo sir endo is the backward right because because the forward is the forward is exo right yes so yes. so what will happen to the value of kp there it will uh, decrease right you'll have more reactants and less products right so it, it will so two is correct three is um So one was correct, two was correct. What about three? Uh, the catalyst will it increase the yield of SO three? No, sir. I think it will only increase the rate, but not the the. Yeah, it will increase both forward and backward reactions simultaneously. So, so the net output remain exactly the same. As of this one, you've got this one is inorganic. You've got a test tube contains X, Y, and Z, which contains a small amount of water. A small amount of NaCl is added to test tube X. To test tube. I said that uh, X, Y, and Z are test tubes that contain water. What happens when you add NaCl to water? What happens to it? Like what happens? I mean, what's it's 
just general knowledge what happens to an acid when you mix water to it uh, so will it uh, dissociate sir, na plus and cl minus yeah and nothing happens it just dissolves right what happens when you add scl4 to water and what happens when you add as so a what happens when you add alcl3 to water in both cases what happens is that you have a very strong reaction a very strong hydrolysis theek okay, hai this is what's going to happen you can check the notes it's a uh, it's right on the first page so nacl with water it just dissolves but alcl3 strong hydrolysis aluminum hydroxide and hcl are formed ssl4 silicon hydroxide and hcl are formed and you're going to see fumes of hcl gas being formed as well so in both cases you have a you have a vigorous hydrolysis so sih4 as a cigar ssh4 plus aluminum hydroxide plus plus hcl now a smaller so after a short time two drops of universal indicator are added to each test tube so which observations so this is strongly acidic strongly acidic so y and z the it turns red and green i think was neutral right so first one is neutral so i think all three statements are all three of the statements are correct is that clear yes sir yes yes as if the next one sodium chloride and sodium iodide react with concentrated sulfuric acid which statement are correct so this is about uh, again inorganic this is about group 17 uh, remember in group 17 you'll be asked this very often what happens with nacl is you just get displacement when nacl reacts with sulfuric acid the h plus one ions and the cl ions in nacl they combine and they form hcl gas in this case and you see white fumes of hcl gas there's no reaction there's no other redox reaction cl minus 1 does not like to lose electrons it's a small atom it has a very strong it's very electronegative so it always does not like to lose electrons but down the group when you have nai you have the same reaction uh, the h plus 1 from the acid and i minus 1 they combine to form hi but i minus 1 really likes to lose electrons i minus 1 is a big ion very shielded so it has a very weak attraction for its electrons so it loses electrons very easily so there's a lot of re redox reaction i minus 1 loses electrons to form i2 sulfur sulfur dioxide h2s all of these products are formed so you have a lot of redox reaction so sodium chloride is definitely no redox cl minus 1 does not like to lose electrons uh so cl minus 1 that does not like to lose electrons so no oxidation um no color change is seen when concentrated sulfur i guess no color change uh sodium iodide i mean the first one is actually correct i mean that's sodium iodide is oxidized by so it is we just wrote that i minus 1 it likes to lose electrons is this clear yes sir I said, which compounds can be obtained from butuene uh, in a single uh, reaction? Butuene is this thing. Butuene, uh, double bond on the second one, in a single reaction. Will you get a diol OH on the middle carbon atoms? I mean, the four carbon atoms. So OH on the middle two carbon atoms. Can you get an OH on the middle two carbon atoms? Can sir with mild oxidation. mild oxidation will give you i mean this one alkenes mild oxidation cold dilute alkene kemo for that will give you a diol so oh groups will get added to both these carbon atoms can you get a single oh we can get two oh can you get a single oh on one of the carbon atoms how about hydration sir yeah hydration is going to do that because if you add water to if you add water to an alkene so h and oh will get added in this case 
So on one of them, the H will get added. On the other one, the OH will get added. So you can get one OH as well. So that can happen as well. What about ethanoic acid? Can you get ethanoic acid? Like if I if I do if I do strong oxidation, yes, you can. What will happen? The alkene will break, right? So strong oxidation is that your alkene completely breaks. It breaks, and uh, if you have one carbon chain with the double bond, that turns into a carboxylic acid. So. Is swallowing what will happen is that this this double bond will turn into a carboxylic acid. So that's ethanoic acid. Is that clear? Yes. Asha, which statement helps to explain the mechanism of the reaction between one chloropropane and ammonia? So that's uh, uh, that's this one. Halogenoalkane. What's the mechanism for halogenoalkane? It's uh, it's nucleophilic substitution. TK. So we have it over here. And remember, it's a primary halogenoalkane. One chloro, one chloropropane. This is exactly one chloropropane. So in one chloropropane, what happens is the bond is polar. So the OH or the NST or the CN they attack in one go. They the the nucleophile attacks. And the seal on the other end gets knocked out. So it all happens in one go. Everything happens in exactly one, one go. While if you had a tertiary halogen alkane, then the CL will get knocked out first, and then the OH ion will come in. Okay, so we are dealing with a primary halogen alkane. Okay, so that's one chloropropane. So he's talking about one chloropropane. So one chloropropane, uh, there's a slight negative charge on the chlorine atom that forms hydrogen bonds with. That doesn't happen. I mean, if you look at the reaction, the CL is not doing anything. It's the OH that's bonding to the carbon atom. So, so nothing is happening in this case. So I think the first statement is correct. Uh, the carbon is polar. There's a lone pair of electrons on the nitrogen. That's also true. The other two are correct. Uh, like if you look over here, the N has the lone pairs and they're the ones that are going to get attracted to the carbon that's partial, partially positive. Is this clear? Yes, sir. The first color, like the chlorine was, wasn't doing anything initially. TK didn't do it. But well, even at the end, it's not doing anything. It just breaks off. TK, that's it. It doesn't bond with anything. It doesn't happen. Nothing happens to it. Now, which compound reacts with the alkaline aqueous iodine to give a yellow precipitate? So, alkaline aqueous iodine is the is your iodoform test. It's this one. Okay. That's your, that's your iodoform test. So, your iodoform test is you need a methyl with a carbonyl or you need a methyl with CHOH. If you have that, the methyl will break off and it will form a CHIC yellow precipitate and the other part will turn into a carboxylic acid. But because it's an alkali, it will turn into a salt of the carboxylic acid. So, so we are looking for methyl with C double bond O. That's what we are looking for. So the first one, butanone, that's... So we've got a methyl with acetyl bond over that's so the first one is fine that's going to give a positive iodoform test then we've got ethanol 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 is an aldehyde so again we've got a methyl with acetyl bond over so that's going to give a positive test as well and then we've got propen 2 all propen 2 all is uh, OH on the second one so we again have a ch3 so we have a CH3 with a CHOH. So we needed any of these two things to happen. So we needed either a CH3 next to CHOH, but we needed a CH3 next to a C double bond, double bond O. So in both our cases, we've got both things. Uh, so that is going to give us a positive iodoform test. That's so all three are fine. Tiki, you be clear? All three are all three are good. Is that clear? Yes, sir. 
This propanoic acid, which starting material can be used to make propanoic acid. So, primary alcohol definitely oxidized. Allied definitely oxidized. Nitriles, yes, that will also make uh, so all three reactions. Like here are the reactions. Uh, just a second. So, primary alcohol will turn into carboxylic acid. The allied will turn into a carboxylic acid, or a nitrile will turn into a carboxylic acid so all three are all three will will do it okay so we're done with one second so we so tomorrow we'll try and uh, maybe finish this one okay Okay, everyone. Here? Yeah, yes. Uh, so before I, I ask you to send the, the chart or the flow the flow chart, not the flow chart, sorry, the mind map or the organic. Yeah. yeah. I said I tried to I tried to search for it in the mega lecture website. I couldn't find it. And is there if you could also send the did, did you, notes? Did you try and uh, one second, where's the Just one second. Just wanted to double check. Uh, did you log in over here? Log in? No, sir. Uh, no, over here, not this part. Uh, did you? Sir, I went there. Yeah, I checked. And I, I mean, find... this one. Go to go to Ace Organic. It's taken a long time, but. I mean, this one, you need to enroll. Oh, so I have to enroll. Yeah, that's that's why everything will open, right? So, and if you click over here, yeah. So in the in the exercise files, I think. But I'll I'll just, I'll share it. I'll share it. It's it's given over here. Is that but clear? Sir, I think I have to enroll. And I said, you just have to sign up like enroll. Okay, sir. Is, sir. is it free? Because I think last time I tried to, I just put it in the basket and it says I have to pay. You just tell me if you if you have any trouble, I'll, I'll give you access. But I think it's free. Okay, sir. I'll try. So, okay, then. Take care. Uh, sir, okay, sir. Sir. And sir, okay, can sir, you also you. send the uh, schedule for the past paper classes, sir? Uh, I'll, I'll share it. Okay. Thank it's you, it's the same one. It's it's uh, it's a... Uh, it's Monday to Friday and probably Saturday as well at 12. Ah, uh, okay. Sir. So, sir, Saturday we have uh, past paper class? Nee, we have past paper class during this time. The only thing is if you want to do a certain topic, uh, then you let me know in advance. And we'll spend the class on that. Okay, topic. so how about the, the, the rest of the sleepers? Uh, we yeah, that's what I'm saying. If you want to do a certain topic, I'll, I'll either share videos with you, or you can you can tell me like which topic you want to do. Oh, so, so okay. sir, starting from now on, we'll just do past papers. Past papers, topics, the one that you want to do. That's so we'll do that. Okay, sir. Okay, take care. Thank you, sir.